Today, we're going to be doing a little fire alarm inspection with the realistic fire alarm system that I have in my garage. Let's get to it. Next to the only exit door in the garage, we have an Edwards 270 SPO, and this one happens to be rebranded by the company Me, but it's pretty much the same thing. As you can see, here's another one, Then this one is branded by EST, but they're all pretty much the same pole station. This right here is the vintage Edwards 895B-201. These alarms were mainly installed in the 80s, and they're very uncommon to see in buildings today. I love the vintage look of this alarm, but I have to say, with the panel's FWR output, the sound that this alarm produces is not the best. It actually sounds like garbage. But hey, it makes noise and it flashes, so it gets the job done. Over on the far side of the garage, we have the Edwards Integrity Series Fixed 110 Candela Horn Strobe. Both of the alarms in this test will be coded to Code 3 by the Fire Alarm Control Panel. You may also notice there's an Edwards theme. We have an EST panel in all Edwards devices. There's a feature on most fire alarm control panels called walk test, and this allows fire alarm inspectors to walk around the building testing different initiating devices without having to run back to the fire alarm control panel to silence the alarm every time. Today we're going to be testing every initiating device in this garage bay, and you'll get to see the walk test feature being used. Getting into walk test on the Kitty FX-64 is really easy. You first open up the panel, now you have access to the keypad, and then you go to the main menu, Scroll down to test, it's just one down, hit enter, and then you can see there's two walk test options, there's walk test silent and walk test audible. The silent version allows you to walk around and test each device without setting off each alarms, and the audible version I'd say is more commonly used, and you can go around each and test each device and then hear the alarms which verifies that each device is working. And that's what we're going to be testing today, so you'll get to see that. So we're going to select walk test audible, Enter the level 1 passcode, which is 1111, for this fire alarm control panel at least. We're going to select all devices, and then hit start. And now as you can see the test light came on, and the fire alarm control panel is in test mode. Over the years of making videos about fire alarm systems on YouTube, I've had a lot of people ask me why I give out the passwords, the default passwords to these fire alarm systems so easily. And let me just say, that's because it's the default passwords. At any time, the building has the option to change the password to their fire alarm control system. If you go into program on this panel, scroll down, as you can see password, you can change the password to the system. So the level one default password, which is 1111, is not the password to any particular building. It's just the default password. And the default password on this system is found online. It can be found on the instruction manual, which are all public records that you can uh, check out at any time on the internet. And to go even further, watch this. Boom! The panel is now locked, so the public does not have access to the keypad even. And if the building decides to leave the keys in the fire alarm control system, well, that's their own problem. They should have thought about um, the potential for someone to simply open the panel and start tampering with it. For the record, I do not recommend anyone ever tamper with fire alarm equipment. I have this sign here because an awesome subscriber sent it in to me, but you see me testing this equipment often because it's my own personal equipment and I can do what I want with it. So I just thought I'd just decide to make that clear today and give a very simple and obvious explanation to that. None of the information I give on this channel is secret or classified. All of the information can be found with public records. So just thought I'd make that clear. <laughs> All right, let's pull this, or I guess we'll key activate it, or should I say screwdriver activate it because we're doing a walk test. And traditionally that's how a lot of inspectors test these devices. They open it up and just flip the switch. I always recommend pulling it simply because I've came across pull stations before where when you pull it, it doesn't activate the switch, so that can be a problem. But a lot of inspectors use the switch, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Here we go. So we know that works, and it's just a matter of closing the pull station and moving on to the next device. All right, now we're going to test both the smoke detectors that are located in the bay of the garage. And we're going to test them using Smoke Centurion, which is canned smoke. 
Here we go. There's one. Now let's test the other. All right, now we'll end the walk test and then go and test the pulse station and make sure the alarms sound. Okay, we can acknowledge that and then go back to walk test in the settings. Re-enter the level one passcode. All devices and then hit end. Now the test is ended. And the panel is going to self reset here and then we can activate the pull station and make sure that the panel is capable of going into alarm and that all the alarms activate and sound like they're supposed to. All right, let's pull it. We're going to activate everything as if it were a real fire. Here we go. As you can see, that thing vibrates this wall. I can feel it vibrating. That's kind of cool. All right, everything's silenced. As you can see, the integrity does have audible silence, and I think the other alarm just overpowers this so much that you can barely even hear it. So I think next test, because I want to hear the sound of this alarm at some point, next test I'll put maybe a strobe or something there, and uh, we'll actually get to hear the integrity. All right, as you can see, this pull station is pulled, and you can't lift the handle back up. So we'll go ahead and stick the screwdriver in the top to reset it. Flip the switch back to normal. Put the handle back up. And then we can just close it. And there we go. It's all reset. We'll go ahead and reset the entire fire alarm system and reset the security system. Four, five, six, seven, off. Four, five, six, seven, off. The 4567 is my own personal code that I programmed in. I just picked a generic cheap code simply because this system isn't really protecting anything yet. And uh, that fire trouble just came on because this wasn't reset yet. We'll go ahead and clear that. But anyways, this isn't really protecting anything yet. It simply, uh, it's simply kind of here for fun, for right now at least. I might put in like a motion sensor or a door contact at some point. All right, everyone, that's gonna be the test today. Thank you for watching, rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.